Alrighty guys, welcome back to another tutorial slash walkthrough. Today we're going to be uh, doing this modeling challenge. So on the right hand side, I found this awesome image of this keyboard or some kind of uh, weird like side accessory for your computer. I thought it looked pretty cool and I think it should be pretty easy to model in Blender. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it and see if we can create something like this. So I think I'm going to start out with just the base here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete every single thing in my scene so I have a complete flat surface to work with. I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to scale it down a little bit like so. I'm going to try my best to match the thickness of the object on the right. Let me make sure my live streamers can see here. Um, now, again, the goal is to try to just match this just using the image. I'm not going to be importing anything into Blender. I'm just going to be using that image as my reference. So it uh, may not be easy. We'll see. Um, so far, I think that looks to be about the size of our actual product on the right. So I'm just going to go to Object, Apply, Scale. And then I'm going to hop into edit mode here. I'm going to select each individual edge, each corner. Now, instead of using the bevel modifier, I am going to be beveling this um, using control B here. And I'm just going to scroll to get my edges here. I'm going to probably scroll quite a few times here. I think that looks pretty close to what it looks like in the picture. Yeah, that looks pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. I'm going to tap out of edit mode. Now, if you look really close in the actual image here, you guys can notice it actually has some layers. It looks like it's stacked. So I'm actually going to scale this on the Z-axis, duplicate this. I'm going to switch over to my random color mode, go to my side view, and I'm going to shrink this top layer down, line it up like so. So you see we have two separate layers here. Now, if you look really closely, like I said, on the reference image, it really does look like this has like two glass panels or something like that. I'm happy with the way that looks. We now have our two panels. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly give that a save. All right, let's go ahead and focus on some of the core elements. A lot of this stuff is made up of primitives, so I'm gonna start by adding one of the knobs, which would just be a cylinder. I'm gonna quickly add a few modifiers to that, starting with our edge split modifier, if I can find it. Here we go, edge split, subdivision surface. Save that again real quick. And I'm also gonna add a bevel to that and bring that to the top here. Now I'm gonna scale this down. I'm going to go to my top down view here and I'm going to try to size this up based on what they have in the picture. I feel like that's pretty close to the actual size of it. Now, another thing I'm going to do is add a mirror modifier and I'm, of course, going to select my main cube here and I'm going to mirror that on the X. So now, whatever I do on this side will happen on the other side. I'm also going to move these into place here. You go to my top down view. That looks pretty close to what they have. Now, again, actually looking back, this actually does indeed kind of sit above the surface. And I do think there's going to be pieces that attach our individual cylinders to each other here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to quickly just apply this scale. And you're going to see our bevel is going to change. So we're going to have to uh, compensate for that by lowering that bevel. That looks good. Um, now, if we really, really look close up on these knobs, they actually have these ridges on the edges. I'm going to come back to that. I just want to lay out my basic elements, and then I'll come back in and do all the detail work. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can build out a key. So let me just add in a cube, because that's the closest thing I can find to what that key looks like. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm, I'm curious how I'm going to actually go about this, uh, because if you take a look at the keys, they're kind of be not beveled in, but you can tell that if you take these two sides and scale them along the X, you kind of have something sort of like this happening at the top. I'm just going to take a look at this and see what it looks like. I think I'm going to start by adding a loop cut to the center. And I'm going to take this edge and bring it down just a little bit. Um, I'm also just going to quickly apply a subdivision surface to this. And I am going to tab into edit mode. And I'm going to add a loop cut on this side. Up there. Actually, guys, you know what I'm going to do? I don't know how I didn't think of this first. I'm actually going to create a mirror modifier on this. I'm going to delete side. I have all those vertices selected. I'm going to add a mirror modifier to this on the Y axis. So that way, whatever we do to one side will just automatically happen to the other side. All right, I'm going to add another loop cut, like so. And this is already starting to look pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna add one more loop cut here. And I think I'm gonna take this top, these top vertices right here Bring them up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. This is starting to look really good. The only other thing I will mention is that I think I'm going to have to make sure that I have my clipping adjusted. That looks good. 
Now on the sides, we're gonna have to bring those sides in as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my vertices here and here. I'm gonna scale those in on the X a little bit. And I think I'm also just gonna to continue to add those loop cuts to get the result that I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna to have to make this a little bit more curved. So I'm gonna add one more loop cut and I think I'm gonna take these top vertices here, bring them down just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna take these and S, Z, zero to scale them to zero. This is starting to look closer to the shape that I think I want. I'm pretty happy with it so far. And what's great about this is since all of these keys are in an array, oops, I missed something up here. Since all of these keys are in an array, stay out of these axis. Zero. That's cool. All right. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to create an array. So this looks like it has a total of, what is that? Nine right there. So I'm going to add an array modifier. Now, of course, I'm going to duplicate that, switch the axes here like so. And I'm going to place these on the top and then I'm going to have to create um, some spacing. It does look like the keys are a little bit smaller than how I have them right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just first bring them down right above the surface here. That looks good. One thing I did notice, if we tab back into edit mode here, um, I kind of forgot to make these um, stray out towards the bottom. So let me just quickly expand this tab so I can see it. Um, for the offset, I think I'm going to do 1.2 on each end. That way they're nice and spaced out. Hope everybody can see that on Instagram. I'm also going to scale it down just a little bit more. Try my best to center that. Now there would be a perfect way to center that if I change the origin and applied all the modifiers, but I'm not ready to do that yet. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, so far this is looking really good. I have pretty much all the elements laid out. I just need to like really refine these keys just a little bit more. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to X-ray mode, highlight the bottom here, S Y scaled on the Y just a little bit, and then S X tab out of edit mode. That looks a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and select everything on the top. Again, going back into x-ray mode here. And I'm just going to look on my top down view, make sure that's scaled in like such. And I'm going to also bring it in on the Y. Now, as you can see, we're going to have some weird overlapping issues here. So we got to be really careful. That looks pretty close. Okay, that looks a lot better than what it did before. I think this is closer to what I'm looking for. I think I'm ready to start adding in a few more details. I'm gonna duplicate these cylinders. I'm going to get rid of every single modifier on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale them down like this. I'm going to create another mirror modifier right here. I'm gonna choose X and Y and I'm going to select our uh, main shape. Now we have, these are gonna be the screw holes that are on each corner. Now, of course, I'm gonna be cutting these in with a Boolean. So the goal is to have two duplicates of these. So the top ones will be the actual screw. And then of course the bottom ones will be our Boolean operation. So I don't know how far this cuts into the actual product, but so far I'm pretty happy with this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expand these ones just slightly so that the screws can actually fit in. And I think I'm just going to click on this shape here. I'm going to click on Boolean. Of course, choose my cylinder. I'm gonna do the same right here for the bottom shape. And then I'm simply going to hide these and rename them screw holes. And then of course these will be the actual screws themselves. Now for the actual screws themselves, these should be pretty simple to model. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, add a couple of loop cuts up here like that. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to my side view. I'm going to highlight everything in X-ray mode. And then I'm simply going to scale these out just a little bit so we get kind of this type of effect here i'm going to add one more bevel here sorry not a bevel uh, actually i will be adding a bevel i'm going to select my edge select loops edge loops scale that in just a little bit and of course i'm going to inset this top face here i is the shortcut for that that looks pretty good to me and then I think what I'm going to do is just bring that up just a little bit. Now, this looks great so far. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is add one more loop cut towards the bottom. It's going to be really hard to see that. But let me make sure I have that correct. That looks good. Now, you're not going to really be able to see that part. But again, I am going to have these be flush. Maybe just slightly protruding the top here. Nothing too crazy. 
Um, and we're going to need that kind of cross hatch section where this looks like a Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm I think I'm gonna be able to achieve that pretty easily, but let me first go ahead and give this a subdiv surface here. Um, and again, I'm going to click on my top face here, and I'm gonna insert it one more time. That, I'm going to shade this auto smooth and give it two subdivisions, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna use a Boolean operation after my, um, right before my mirror. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cube, scale it way down, top down view, I'm going to scale the cube way down like this. Now, this is going to be kind of a cool thing right here because I just learned this trick recently. Um, if you go into edit mode with a cube or with anything, you select the faces that you really want to extrude. Now, instead of just clicking um, S once you have them all selected, as you can see, I'm doing a horrible job selecting. If you click S, it's just going to do that. But if you click Alt S, actually, it's not going to work. My fault. That trick will not work like I thought it would. So I'm just going to do... Um, e, Y, 0.2, and then I'm going to do, let's see, E, X, 0.2. Now, again, I'm just extruding these. Let's do, sorry, E, X, negative 0.2. There we go. I'm just making a plus symbol with each, each side of the face, E, X, 0.2. And again, I'm extruding it on the X axis. Now, for this one, we'll do E, Y, 2. Nope, oops. Uh, e, Y, negative 0.2. There we go. Now, we have our plus symbol. All I have to do now is go ahead and place it to the best of my ability in the center here. And then I need to go ahead and put it right onto the screw. I'm going to click on my screw, add a Boolean modifier. Of course, I'm going to select this shape right here. And just like that, we have a screw. Now, it's not going to be perfect. If I really wanted to make this perfect, I would probably actually put this in sculpt mode and add all sorts of deformations and things like that. Um, this looks really good. The only thing is we have to put our Boolean before uh, the mirror modifier, which should give us a plus on every single screw. This is fantastic. Now, these screws actually feel a little bit too big, so I'm actually going to have to scale everything down. So let me go ahead and unhide my plus sign. And these, I'm going to go to my top-down view, scale them in a little bit. And I'm going to make sure they're still kind of flush with the top. And then, of course, I'm going to also adjust my Boolean modifier. So my actual screw holes, I'm going to go into my X-ray mode, go to top-down view, scale these down, bring them up. I'm going to hide them again, hop out of X-ray mode. And I think I'm just going to scale this up just a little bit more so it's a little bit more flush. And then I'm going to hide my screw Boolean, and that looks good. I just wanted those to be a little bit smaller than they already were. This is looking good. I do think that I need to go to my original object here. I need to add a loop cut towards the bottom. And I need to get more of a base to these. That looks really good. Again, I'm using a lot of modifiers here, but it's working out really well for this. Um, just because it's there's such simple shapes, and I really think this is looking really good. All right, so let's go ahead and see what else can we do to this. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is just hit A to select everything, shade it auto smooth. So far, this is looking really good. I'm really excited to start applying materials to this, but we're not quite done yet. There's a couple more things we need to do. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and add in our cuts for our keys. So if you look on our image on the right, for those on Instagram that can see it right now, there's actually like insets inside of the main keyboard uh, piece. So I'm just going to scale this down to something that looks proper for each key start with the size of the key and go out just a little bit i think that looks great i'm going to add an array modifier and duplicate that array modifier and of course we're going to use the same offset that we used for our keys uh, and then we should be able to knock this up to two or three here we go and i'm just going to align this the best of my ability and actually we might have to choose a smaller offset since it's a different size cube and I just noticed our keys are indeed not aligned to the, key, the actual keyboard itself. I'm going to go to my x-ray mode real quick. That looks good. And then we'll take our top layer. Awesome. That looks pretty good to me. Um, now the goal here is, of course, to just have this cut right into our keyboard. Our top plate, at least. So I'm going to click on my top plate, add another Boolean modifier, and I'm going to select these guys right here. I should have my inset, and I do. Now, I am curious if I was to add a bevel, if this would work after our uh, Boolean here, and it does sort of work. You can see it's a little bit fishy, and I think the reason for that is because maybe I didn't apply the scale, or it's just 
doing something a little bit weird here. All right, we'll come back to that. Anyway, this looks great. Let me bring these down in the inset. Let me just make sure everything looks correct here. Let's see. I think I might, I might have to go to x-ray mode here. Yep. This looks pretty good. Something's not quite lining up. Let's do that. Okay, I see what's going on here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try to line up these insets a little bit better. Here, let's get out of x-ray mode. Yeah, I knew, I knew that lining this up would be a little bit of a challenge, but it's okay. That is what we're here for. All right, let's go ahead and select these. Let's start in the corner here. And let's try one. It's pretty good. And then for our offset here, start at the bottom, work our way back. That looks good to me. I'm happy with that. That looks much better, much better. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay. This looks great. Um, let's go ahead and finish off these um, these twisty knobs, whatever they are, the volume control right here. Um, these are pretty much the only thing left, I think. Um, everything else I'm pretty happy with. I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate these, scale this top down. So bring this down. Now it does look, if you look really, really close on the right hand side again, you kind of see that there's like a top lip to this. Um, and I actually do want those to be two separate pieces, and it'll make more sense while why I'm doing this later. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a slight bevel. I'm going to apply the scale here, and we're going to see that bevel jump up. I'm going to readjust that. That looks good. And then I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring this down, of course, like that. All right, I'm going to apply the scale one more time here. This is looking great, and we haven't even gotten into any materials. I'm very excited to get into the actual materials and lighting. Um, let's see, how long have we been recording? Does not say on OBS. That is definitely something I wish they had as a feature. Anyway, all right, so let's see. This is looking good. We have everything set up the way we want it. The only other thing I can think of at the moment is let's do the same thing we did with our keys, and let's add an inset into the top of the keyboard. One more Boolean for our keyboard. Absolutely love the Boolean modifier. Um, it is awesome. I'm also going to get rid of these modifiers because they are not needed except for the mirror modifier. Of course, we're going to select that. Perfect. Now we have our cut. I know it's kind of hard to see, uh, but it is there. Let me make sure. There you can see a little bit better now. That looks great. Um, I'm very happy with how everything's coming along. This is looking good. I do think these are going to have to be slightly on top of the keyboard, just a little bit more. Now, if you really look, we do need to adjust these pieces here because they're actually a lot thinner than they seem. And right underneath of them, there's going to be some kind of toggle switch. So I'm going to create that. Not toggle switch, I'm sorry, like just a piece that connects them. And let's just assume that that is the piece that connects them. Let's keep it there. Um, and we'll come back to that because I do think some of these pieces are going to be transparent. So you might be able to see through these. This looks great so far. I'm very happy. This is, again, this is just based on this image on the right. So we don't have any actual measurements. We're completely eyeballing everything. But I think so far we're doing a pretty good job. There is one more thing I noticed. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this plate, scale this way down, really thin. Now there is another back plate to this that's black. Now, I can't help myself. I might hop into rendered mode real quick and start adding some materials. I don't want to jump ahead too quick because I tend to do that a lot on projects. And people have reached out before and said, uh, can you please don't do that? So I'm actually just going to quickly finish up these knob pieces and then we'll be on our way. So here's a really, really cool way to get these um, grooves on the side of the knob. I'm going to make a square. I'm going to thin it out like this. I'm going to line it up with the side of my knob here. Now it's going to be really hard to see. I am going to have to figure out how many grooves are in the side of the knob. So let me go ahead and just quickly take a look on the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's at least like 14. Let's just go with the number 14 for now. All you got to do is you have to add in a curve. We're going to add in a curve circle. I'm going to scale it down. You can kind of see it right here. Um, and I'm going to try my best to line this up with our knob. 
the outer diameter there maybe make it slightly smaller that looks pretty good i know you guys probably can't see this on instagram but on youtube you should be able to see we are in 4k resolution here i'm going to go ahead and click on my uh, piece right here i'm going to click on curve i'm going to select my curve object now let's see if i do this right and then if you click array is it array first and then curve i think it is okay so if we click array here we go and then you add the curve modifier after you can then place these let's go ahead and give that a 14 count and let's reduce the offset until they're barely around like that that actually looks pretty even and that was eyeballed so i'll take it uh, this looks good what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go ahead and click on this uh which one has the modifier it is is it this one i guess they're the same error off okay so that's not the original so i'm actually going to take these two items I am going to quickly bring them over to the other side. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can add the Boolean modifier. Now I'm going to take my circle, my Bezier circle. Oops, that's not the circle. I'm going to scale it out just a little bit so that these aren't cutting in too much. That looks perfect. And then I'm just going to quickly adjust my offset so everything looks as even as I can make it. Now that I have these, I should be able to just cut right into uh, my circle or sorry, my, my uh, cylinder. I'm also gonna bring these up because if you look, the cut stops at the bottom of the knob, the knob there. So I'm gonna add a Boolean modifier. Now, this probably should be right before, it should be right after the subdivision. Let's try it, see how it works. Hide these, click on, what did I do? All right, we might have to, we might have to scale this out a little bit. Oh, you know what? I think I have to apply my scale. Let's see. Something something weird's happening here, and I probably... Oh, it might be because of this bevel. I guarantee it's because of the bevel. Okay, hold on one second, guys. And, oh, I know why. We need a solidify modifier. Let's try to add that right for our boolean. Okay, and then I'm going to make the thickness a little bit higher. And then we only have one left that's not working, and why is this one not? working by adjusting our scale of our curve that looks good it's working i'm not going to look into why it's not working for the other ones you can see it's not working very well on this side that is because we're not quite aligned so i'm going to go ahead and bring this in on by a little bit all right let's see how that works. all right we'll come back to that but this looks great so far it is happening on both sides Let's hop into lighting and materials since we don't have a crazy amount of time. Um, this looks great. Let's go ahead and hop into cycles. Let's just save this real quick. Let's go to render view. Let's quickly add an HDRI and then we will add our own lighting as well, but I just want to start with an HDRI just to get something on this. Okay, uh, the keys are going to be black, so I'm just going to quickly give them a black shader with a kind of higher roughness. Now we'll, we can come back later and we can give this some bump um these knobs are also going to be black but they're going to be a black metallic so i'm going to go ahead and give them a black material high metallic value lower roughness something like that looks pretty good the top is going to be the same material so i'm just going to copy that material the bottom i believe is going to be that same metallic material so i'll give it that now these pieces i don't know if they're glass or what but i'm just going to give them a new material I'm going to make them glass with zero um, roughness. I think since they're probably plastic, I'll just give them 1.2 for the IOR. And then, of course, I'm going to copy that material over to this side as well. Now, the reason this isn't going to look exactly like it does on the right is because of the lighting, of course. So once we have our proper lighting, we should get something really nice here. I'm just going to take a plane, scale it down, scale it up, sorry. This looks great so far. As you can see... Um, this is looking awesome. Let me change my IOR to 1.45 to see if the glass does look good. If it was glass, yeah, it looks that looks pretty good. I'm also just going to make these little handles here metallic. I'm just going to pretend like they're just kind of like a chrome material. I'll give it 0.2 for the roughness. So far, this looks awesome. And we haven't even really done any lighting yet or camera work. So let me go ahead and set up a camera real quick. I'm just going to add in a camera into our scene. I'm going to bring it over here, snap to it place myself near my object. We'll use an 85 millimeter lens. Now, the, uh, the one thing I will say that I haven't done yet, 
Um, and definitely a flaw on my part is I, I did not create this to scale because I don't know what scale the object is, but we'll still make a really nice render of this regardless. Um, I'm just gonna give the floor just a nice glossy look by lowering the roughness. Um, I'm also going to just quickly slap on a different HDRI. Let's try this one, a little warmer. That looks kind of nice. There's one I particularly love called Power Plant. This one's very clean. Uh, I'm gonna go with this for right now. I'm going to raise my pass part out value so I can just see what's in my rendered view of the camera. I'm also going to switch this to 1920 by 1080, give ourselves a really nice um, cinematic look to this. I'm going to place my camera further back in my scene. I'm going to turn off my overlays in rendered view, and I'm just going to create a nice depth of field effect here. I'm going to put a really low depth of field. I'm going to select an object to focus on. Um, and that is pretty much it. There's going to be a lot of other shading stuff that I want to get into, but this really looks good without even really doing much. And of course, I'll probably have this off to the right, right? So here's one thing I will add is my nice new grid floor shader. This is a quick shout out to something that I am selling. Um, yeah, I don't feel bad about talking about it, but I am going to go ahead and copy my new shader over into my project because I really think it'll fit this well. I'm just going to copy that plane over. I'm going to scale it down a bunch, go to my camera view, and I'm going to bring it right below the surface. Just go ahead and double check. I got to turn my overlays back on so I can see what I'm doing. If you just bring this right below our object, you can see that already we have a really nice professional look, even though we didn't really do that much. And the best part about this shader, which I will be linking below, is that it's completely customizable. So I'm really excited. So what I can do is I can actually just take this grid color, lower that saturation. I think I'm going to make the mortar color maybe a darker color like this. Um, and then what's really cool about this part is you can actually just adjust the mix of everything and the scale. So if I want to scale this down a bunch and make this thing look like it's a lot smaller, I think maybe a scale of six might be perfect. And then with the depth of field combined, we get a really nice effect. Again, we're going based off this image on the right. So we only have this image. Um, and I think we've done a pretty darn good job. The only thing I will say that I think I could definitely improve upon is where these actual layers are sitting because there's a very clear separation in the image, um, but not right here. So I'm going to take these and just lower them very, very slightly. I'm going to literally go into my side view and I'm going to separate them just enough so that they're barely, barely, barely touching. But I want to notice that separation, right? Because I think that's really important. And in real life, they wouldn't be able to touch that closely. Um, so let's just go ahead and see if we notice the difference. I definitely, definitely notice the difference. Um, and you know what I wanted to mention, guys, now that we're on this topic? If you look at the actual render itself, You'll probably notice before it looked really dark and the, the glass wasn't showing like it should. And the reason for that is that those objects were touching and I always forget to check for that, um, but I'm so glad I did. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on our beveled top. Now, if we look really close to this beveled top, you'll notice on here it has a, a silver rim to it. So I'm going to apply my modifiers for this and I'm gonna select that specific part. I'm applying all of my modifiers here. Now I'm gonna select these specific faces here. I'm gonna go ahead to my side view. I am going to go to x-ray mode. Should be able to very carefully select that face. I don't know if it selected everything. It did, all right, perfect. So these faces right here, I'm gonna assign them a new material. Add a new material, click on new, assign. Go to my material preview mode and I should have a new material for just that part. As you can see, I indeed do. And if I go to rendered view, um, okay, I missed the top, but that's okay. We'll come back to that. So if you look from this angle, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and increase that metallic, make that roughness point two. And as you can see, now we have that silver rim um, on the upper edge. Now, the one thing we are missing, if we look really close on the details over here, is that little mark like the mark that tells you where your volume is actually sitting. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. I'm just going to use a plane for that. Um, you guys will probably say, Kenny, that's a horrible idea. Um, that is not how you're supposed to shade. Um, I don't care. <laughs> um, now, to be honest with you guys, it's not that I don't care. I just know that I'll be able to achieve the same effect um, with kind of like a cheap, a cheap way of doing it. Uh, let's see, scale it down a little bit more. 
that looks pretty good. Now again, I know this is not the standard way of doing it, but this is the way I'm doing it, and I don't care. Now the only other thing I will say is that yes, you will have to somehow line this up as closely as you can um, without touching the edge here. So let's just see what this looks like. I'm gonna create, or I'm gonna figure out what material this is. I'm just gonna call this rim, um, and then I'm gonna say, actually I'm just gonna say um, light metallic. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and I'm gonna apply the same material. Um, and then the only other thing I'll say is that yes, I probably will have to subdivide this a couple of times and bring these out on the edge so that it's a little bit more curved. And then I'll just simply select a mirror modifier and I should be good to go. I'm just going to adjust this as needed. Again, this is really just eyeballing it, but it looks good to me. That in the center, I don't know. I think that looks good. Um, I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on a new modifier, mirror modifier, I'm gonna select this. Now, as you can see, they're facing each other. Um, I think I'm okay with that. I actually think it looks kind of cool. Let me switch to render view and see what that looks like. It looks okay. I could duplicate it. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm not gonna use the mirror modifier. Shift D to duplicate. I'll bring it over to the X. And then I think I'll have, I'll have this thing rotate on the Z 90 degrees and I'll just bring it down here. That, I think that's fine. And um, again, I'm just eyeballing, but I'm trying to piece this together as best as I can. I think this looks really good for not putting a crazy amount of effort into it. I don't know how long we've been recording, but based on the image on the right, what do you guys think? I think it turned out pretty good. Um, now, if, if I stopped right now, I would stop right now, but I did just remember um, that I missed something. You look really close here. I missed a shader on these screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these the same metallic that is on the top of the knobs. That should definitely tie it together a little bit more. The only other thing I can really think of is the bump on the keys. Um, and then of course our kind of brushed metal look that will be on top of our actual knobs themselves. But this looks fantastic so far. And I'm really, really pleased with the way this came out. And again, we, we don't have to use this grid floor shader, but I had no choice but to shout it out because I'm just so happy with it. All right, let's go ahead and just see if we can add a quick shader to this. I am gonna give Ducky3D a quick shout out. I'm gonna go over to my real-time materials pack. Thank you so much, Ducky3D, if you happen to be watching. Much appreciated. I happen to have the perfect little shader right here. It's called Bumped Metal, but we're gonna use it for our keys and we're gonna see how good it looks. Let's head back over, let's paste our um, shader in here and let's just go ahead and hide it. Let's go to our rendered view. Let's zoom into our keys and let's choose Bumped Metal. And then I'm gonna check out the detail scale. If you zoom in, you can see that it is bumped pretty well. Um, I'm gonna see what happens if we bring the scale down to 50. That looks pretty good. And then of course I'm gonna raise my roughness value. And I'm gonna change my color to black. And I'm gonna double check again. If you look really close, look at that detail. It looks so good. Thank you Ducky3D for these awesome materials. I'm actually gonna lower the value just a little bit more. That looks really, really good. Um, and I, I just love that I'm able to use that. Thank you so much, Ducky. All right, there's one more material I'm gonna grab for my real-time materials pack. Um, and it is a brushed gold, I think is what it was called. Here it is right here. So if you guys take a look, this is called brushed gold. And as you can see, it has that streaky effect that we're going for. So I'm gonna just copy that over into our modeling challenge here. I'm gonna paste it in. I'm going to hide it. And I'm gonna go over to my, this piece right here. Let's see. I'm gonna add my brushed gold and we might have to mess with the mapping a little bit. So Ducky, I might have to go into your nodes. Yep, so I'm gonna have to mess with the mapping, but if we, if we check out our actual scratches here, we can actually adjust the thickness of those. Um, I should be able to go into the mapping. Let's go to our shading tab. Now we're in our material preview mode here. This is his node group. I'm just gonna quickly tab into that and see if I can just the mapping, 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 hoping this is the mapping right here for that. Oh. All right, so this is for a different part. Let's see if it is this part here. It is. 
Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's try 90. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm stupid. Hold on. We are going to do this instead. 1 and then 45. Oop, we'll try that one more time. There we go. All right, see how now we have it uh, the horizontal way that I was looking for? This is perfect. Now the only thing left to do is, of course, reduce the saturation on these and then find the color we're looking for, which, of course, is going to be almost black, maybe like a dark gray. And let's go ahead and pop back into render view. And let's just zoom in on these and see how that looks. And it looks good. I think maybe for the scale, I'll do 10. That looks a little bit better. Um, and then for my top right here for this material, I'm going to change that to brushed gold as well. But I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that material and I'm going to change my values here. And I'm going to double take. Let's see how that looks. That looks good. That's exactly what I was going for. Now, if you look in the picture on the right, this is a swirled version. I could get into the nodes. I really don't feel like it. So I think I'm happy with how this looks. Maybe a little bit more like that. Yep. And let's go to camera view. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit darker. Maybe raise the roughness a little bit. Now I'm also going to take a look at this roughness here. I want to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. What did I do to the mapping? Hold on. 45. There we go. Uh, it wants to change the other one too. All right, for this for this top one, we're just going to use our own shader. Uh, scratch everything I did for the other part of it. Fine. Of course, I'm going to raise that roughness a little bit. And I think I think that looks good. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. I want to go back to layout and I want to really zoom in on this and see how we did. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, looking again on the right, I could probably spend hours and hours and hours on this. Um, I think we did a pretty good job. I don't know if I'm really missing anything too crazy here. We have the keyboard, we have the lighting, we have a nice background, nice depth of field, even though this isn't scaled correctly. I'm pretty darn happy with how this turned out, um, especially considering the amount of time that we really did not spend on it. There's only one thing I think I'll do, and this is, this is something I thought about doing earlier, but I just didn't get around to it, is this actual part on the knob, I'm gonna solidify this, I'm going to add the solidify modifier right here. Now, I'm just going to bring this up, scale it out just a little bit like that, and I'm going to cut into this piece here. Let's see how that looks. And for some reason, I cannot select that. There we go. Why in the world does it look like that? There we go. Perfect, except we need to solidify right here. Oop. Almost perfect. All right, that's what I was looking for right there. Perfect. Okay, I know I do things in a different way, guys, but to be honest, this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, the other thing I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to delete this entire one right here. And I'm just going to duplicate this one. Now that I have the knob the way I want it, I'm going to duplicate this on the X. I am going to then, actually before I do that, I'm going to apply all of my modifiers. And I'm going to place this exactly on the top here as close as I can get it. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you wanted to make it perfect, you could go ahead and um, you could use your origins and such. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. And then for this one, I'm going to set the origin, rotate it a little bit more randomly. Now, we should be able to now select that part of the knob and give it that metallic surface, which I should have done before I duplicated it. Again, you can only connect the dots looking backwards, but if I select my faces here and I go to my materials, and I click on this and I click assign, we should be able to see that pop up. Perfect, I'll just do the same to the other side real quick because it's super easy to do. Boom, boom, assign. Oops, 
sign. There we go. All right, we are good to go. Let's snap back to our camera. And I think that looks pretty good. Again, I could look at this all day and find a million and ten ways to improve it, but I'm pretty darn happy with that based on an image. Remember, we're not using dimensions. We're just eyeballing it. I don't think I did a terrible job. I think that render looks pretty darn solid for not doing a crazy amount of work. I will say I kind of wish that the keys had like some numbers or something on them. Um, we could add numbers if we wanted to, but... Oh, yes, yes, that's a great point. You can use anisotropic for the top of the knobs. Yeah, let's try that, actually. That's a great idea. Um, again, I could get into the shader that I was talking about, but I'm not going to do that right now. Let me raise that anisotropic value. Wow, look at that. That's perfect. Thank you. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was going for. Of course, I can lower that roughness a little bit more. Let's see how that looks from this distance. That was a fantastic suggestion. Thank you very much. That helped a lot. Um, I almost want to just use that on the on the knobs themselves. Oh, you know what I didn't fix about the knobs is the, the piece of oh, I forgot to fix that. That's the one thing I did not fix. Let's see, like wait, man. Uh, we were getting a weird boolean issue with that. Let me see. Where's that issue? I'm not sure what how that was happening. Um, so weird. Um, I didn't, I will actually don't know how that ended up happening. Let's see this. Let's see our, where in the world? Oh, I see. So, something funky is happening here. I might have to reopen this. Oh, wait, do I want my Boolean to be before subdiv? Nope, 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 nope. Oof, so close, so close. That could have been perfect. I could, I could do this, and I could go ahead and scale it perfectly, and then adjust the solidify from there. It's weird, it's like applying everything... That I don't want it to to the wrong objects. All right, I'm gonna X out of this and reload it. Ah, uh, the things the things that they cut out of YouTube tutorials that Blender artists and other people run into. And it's funny because they never show it. They'll never ever show it, um, which really is frustrating for me. Find there it is. That's what I was looking. For. See what is happening. Ah, I see the issue. good i know that doesn't look good but it is good because now i know what was happening with this and all i have to do is select these and it i'm hoping this gets rid of the i rearrange aha i have fixed the issue um so just to tell you guys what i just did um i went ahead and fixed the spacing on the array and i increased the bezier curve and then i reordered my um modifiers on this cylinder all right sometimes it's hard to talk because there's so many things i just did that i'm trying to remember what i did um, but i'm trying to help you guys so that if you run into the same problem you can also solve it um this looks fantastic i'm really really pleased with this um this isn't even a real product that i've seen before but visualizing it like this helps so much now, the one thing I will say is, yes, the depth of field is a little intense. I'm going to give it an f-stop of maybe 0.5. Now, right now, I'm using an 85-millimeter lens, and my focal distance is just set to one of these objects. You know what? I might knock it down just a little bit more. I do love some good depth of field. I'm definitely like prone to always adding that to my renders. This looks really, really good, though, and I'm really, really happy with it. And I hope you guys on YouTube had a fun time watching. I hope everybody on Instagram had a fun time watching. Um, the only other thing that I could add is maybe a cord. Maybe I'll just add add a little bit of a cord coming out of the back. Um, that would be pretty easy to do. I'll show you guys how we can do that. I'm going to head back to solid view. I'm going to add in a curve. I'm just going to add in a Bezier curve. Drag it out on the Y. And as you can see, it's coming right here. I'm just going to rotate it so it looks like it's coming out of the back of this. 
I'm going to tab into edit mode. I know it's going to be kind of hard to see that if you're on Instagram. I'm going to tab into edit mode, grab this anchor, and I'm just going to bring it right here. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. And I think I'm going to press E to extrude it. And then here, press E one more time, rotate. And I'm just pressing E and R to kind of rotate this. And I'll probably end up changing my mind about how I want this done. And then I'll press E one more time. I'll be drag it away from the scene. Let me snap to my camera view so I can see what this is going to look like. Camera view. All right, so this, this one needs to go out further on the X. And I actually think if I drag it on the Y, that might look better. That looks pretty good for where the actual cord could be. Um, really, the only thing left to do is extrude it. Now, you're not going to be able to see this side, so I don't think I'm going to add anything there. But if you go to Geometry, and then you go to, where is it? No, it's Round, and then you Depth. Yep, now we can just decide how thick we want our cord to be. And then, of course, we can place our cord towards the center. Um, there is one thing I will say, though, that I just didn't even think about until just now. I'm going to tab and go into edit mode and subdivide. Uh, there it is. Um, and then I'm going to make sure this is laying flat on the ground. That looks perfect right there. Of course, this one. I'm going to try to make it as gradual as I can. I think that looks pretty good. Tab out of edit mode, go back to rendered view, and there is our cord. We just need to simply give it a material. And I actually think that we can just make a material that's just a black BSDF. And then I'll just simply give this a slightly hot. Actually, honestly, that looks pretty good right there. I am having issues with this, though. Hold on. There is like a little bit too much of like a harsh line here. I want it to be more curved. I'm gonna go ahead and bump these values up to 30. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. This piece here, scale that down just a little bit. Something fishy's happening here. That looks a little bit better. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. But again, that just adds a little bit more. Um, you don't really have to know that it's the cord, but I mean, time to tell. Um, I almost wonder if it would make sense if it was just even coming out more beyond the scene. This. I don't like that. just don't like the way this one looks scale of it can't tell maybe it's just me but it looks too janky the fact that it's near the floor i feel like it is oh. i think that's gonna look a lot smoother no why why oh blender blender is like the perfect program to get easily frustrated at but i think this looks really good um i'm pretty happy with it again um the only other thing I could add is a computer screen, but at this point, you're just adding so much. I think this render looks pretty darn clean for not doing too much. Um, part of me does wonder if I played with this material just a little bit more. I mean, this is more of a creative thing that I could be doing, but this middle layer, I'm just going to duplicate the glass. I'm going to give it a 0.33 roughness value. I just want to see what that's going to look like. Maybe even 0.25. All right, let's try 0.1. It looks pretty good. Maybe maybe not the best choice. All right, let's actually reduce that. Okay. Messing with the IOR a little bit. You know what, guys? I think it looks good. I think I'm ready to render. Um, I'm going to just double check that nothing is showing that shouldn't be showing. Everything that's here is currently on the rendered layer. All right, I'm going to render this at 200%. This is the last thing I'll do before I hop off of this tutorial. I'm going to use 50 samples. I'm going to use optics denoising. Let's go into my light path settings so you guys can see those as well. Max bounces. I usually just set these all to 20. You guys probably think I'm crazy. It always gives me great renders. I have the computer to handle it, so I really don't mind. 
Um, the only other thing I'm having issues with is this material up here. This material right here, something's off about it. What's what's going on with that material? I thought I fixed this one. Oh, you know what? We got to give that anisotropic value on that. That fix it. Something something whack is happening. That looks a little bit better. It was just too bright. Anybody else agree with that? It was too bright. Still is just a little bit too bright. It's very distracting. I'm thinking about so many little details when I'm doing this. All right, back to the render settings. Light, light paths are good. Let's render this. Let's see how it looks. And we'll have to figure out if we need to adjust anything from there. We're looking at about a 30 second render, which isn't terrible at all. And of course, I will be using this for the thumbnail. This is great. I, I'll try to do these weekly if I can, especially as my time frees up. This looks great. Um, so again, we are going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see the details here. Um, that was about a 17 second render um, at 50 samples. Now, I do want to point something out. Even though we're using such a large dimension, if you really zoom in, you can notice some noise here. Now, again, we're only using 50 samples, so you guys can totally use more. I think I'm going to quickly re-render this at 150 samples, and I just want to see the difference. Again, it'll take a little bit longer, but it's totally worth it. The only other thing I probably would have done to this is bevel these edges here um, on the glass. Just give them a little bit more definition, but I do kind of love how they're just clear cut. Part of me doesn't mind that at all. Got our grid floor. I noticed I, I have some kind of glitch happening with the grid floor. I'll have to take a look at what's going on there. I'm actually that see that's gonna bother me, so I'm gonna actually fix that before we hop off here. This looks really, really good though. It's not even done yet. Just wait till the denoiser kicks in, because you can tell this is a really, really noisy area. One thing I did notice throughout my blender years is that anywhere where there's not a lot of focus, you're always just gonna get a ton of noise. Um, so the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose 500 samples and then I'm going to fix my grid floor and then I'm actually going to call it a day. I'm going to click on my grid, grid floor here. I'm going to adjust my mix, get rid of those lines. And I think this looks incredibly clean. The other cool thing about the grid floor, I can adjust the roughness. So if I really want to, and I actually think that looks so clean. Notice how the floor now has kind of a glossy look. I just think that looks so nice. I actually, actually don't mind the full reflection. I think that looks really nice. I think I might keep that. Maybe, maybe just a slight roughness. We just want, we want to see those lines a little bit more. Uh, I should make those a little bit more prominent, making them a slightly darker. What do you guys think? Do you think that looks good? I think it looks pretty. I think it looks pretty good. Um, again, this is why they say an artist's work is never done because you just could work on this for hours and hours and hours. Um, again, we're, we're basing this off of this image on the left here. So I'm really, really pleased with this. I think at this point, guys, let's just render it one more time, see how it looks and see if we're happy with it. Again, we're rendering at a higher dimension here. And the reason we're doing that is because when you render at a larger dimension, and I don't know if I'm the only one that's noticed this, you can get away with much less samples and you can still get a super high quality result especially when that denoiser kicks in. You can see I'm still getting a lot of noise down here. Now, of course, of course, this is going to take a second, but the denoiser has not kicked in yet. Um, I, I'm still really, really pleased with this. I really love the way this texture came out for the keys. I just think it looks so good. I'm so, so happy with it. Um, someone just asked, are you using a reference image? Yes, I am using a reference image, which is right here. This is the reference image that I'm using. Um, and then of course, this is gonna be our final result once it renders out. We have about a minute left on it. Um, so we're just kind of going from, we're going from an image to a pretty good looking version of that product. I'm really pleased with this. Um, and of course, lighting kind of plays a huge factor into it as well. We're only using an HDRI, but to be honest, that's all we really need. Um, this looks fantastic. We have about 41 seconds left on this. Go ahead and give this a second to wrap up. Um, these look great. It, it, it is just incredible. I, I love Blender. Like I really genuinely missed playing on Blender. I missed doing this. 
Um, I just have been so busy with so many different things. It's been so nice to finally get back to doing this and just taking a moment to model for myself and just get back on the tutorial grind because I know you guys have been missing that. You can see this brush metal coming in really nicely here. And of course, thank you so much. Whoever said anisotropic, that was a great idea. I don't know how to think of that. Um, this is almost done, about two seconds left, and that denoiser is going to kick in, and we're going to have a really nice render. This looks really, really nice. Um, this is the completed render right here. If I wanted to, I could go even higher sample count. You can see that I do still have some noise, um, but at the level that, at the level this is going to be shown at, which is going to be like this size, you're not going to notice that. Um, but if you want to be a perfectionist, you can absolutely turn your samples up more. Again, it just takes a longer time to render, but at the end of the day, sometimes that's really worth it. Uh, but if you don't have a minute and 57 seconds to wait around for this to render, I totally understand. I'm just going to quickly save this because I think this looks so nice. Uh, I'm going to save this as keyboard modeling practice. Now, for people that are watching on YouTube, thank you guys for sticking around this long. I am going to actually go ahead and stop the YouTube tutorial at this time, and then I'm going to answer my Instagram questions. I will be posting the live on Instagram. I will be posting this on YouTube, um, and I will be linking uh, Ducky Ducky's materials, which I used for the keys. I think I used uh, the fast gold or whatever it was called, brushed gold for this one. So I will be linking all that stuff for you guys. Uh, super excited to, again, post this tutorial. I know it was a long one. Thank you, YouTube, for sticking around. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys got some value out of this.